Hi everyone again. Uh, it's been a while, but I've been looking again at the ATtiny13a, and I've been looking at code efficiency and how we can make simple programs so small that they will fit on this micro. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can write something using 548 bytes of program memory and bring it down to 14, or in this case, you can see this one's a bit special, 4 bytes. This is blinking using only 4 bytes and a bit of cheating, and I'll explain in a minute how. So the first sketch I made was through the Arduino IDE, this is the red uh, microcontroller, and it is basically the blink example sketch. And I've used the Ardcore 13, so I can compile it for the ATtiny13 processor. So I'm pretty sure it's quite simple how it works. It uses the delay function based into the Arduino. And this kind of has the disadvantage that it blocks any other activity. You can't process any more instructions. You're stuck in this timed loop for the desired duration. And of course, in the typical Arduino way, it is the pin directions and the levels, high and low, are set using the pin mode and the digital write function. All in all, this takes up 350 of the 1024 bytes, and that's just over 34% of the microcontroller's flash memory. The second sketch comes from the Arduino website, and it's a tutorial about how to implement a blink without using the delay function. So in this way, you can have your sketch execute other code and still keep the LED blinking. And this uses the millis function built into the Arduino, which reports the uptime of the microcontroller in milliseconds. Uh, it compares the current time with the time it's last triggered, and it toggles the LED if it is greater than a defined interval. It still addresses the pin direction and the level with the pin mode in digital write. And yeah, for this you have to pay the price of compiled code size as it ends up being more than the previous sketch at 548 bytes, which is more than half of the ATtiny's uh, flash memory. Moving away from the Arduino IDE for the third sketch, uh, this was written using the Atmel Studio IDE, just using AVR GCC, just plain C with no Arduino code. It kind of works in a similar way to the first Arduino sketch in that it uses a time delay loop and it uses one of the uh, AVRGCC delay utility libraries to do that. The problem with it again is it blocks any further ex execution and then it, the blinking can't go on in the background while other things are happening. One of the differences from the first one is, however, that it addresses the pins using bitwise operations. And I think as a result of this, it makes the compiled code size far more compact uh, down to 68 bytes, in fact, which is only 6% of the AVR memory. Um, one of my favorite YouTubers, actually, Julian Illett, has a useful discussion of the digital write and the pin mode functions and how efficient the direct port manipulation can be. Uh, he's talking about it in regard to uh, the speed of the Arduino and port manipulation, but it also cuts down the size of the compiled code also. The fourth microcontroller with the blue LED is running an arguably more native approach to blinking an LED using the 8-bit timer and compare unit module. Now this runs continuously in the background so other code can, you can execute, so all you have to do is set it up and it keeps running while the microcontroller is alive. Um, what it does is it toggles one of the pins when the timer matches a certain value, and it's also possible to generate an interrupt routine to do more complex things. You might use this mode, for example, for PWM. Um, the timer increments with every CPU tick, uh, but we've used Prescaler to slow it down a bit, and we've also running the CPU at a slightly slower rate at 128 kHz using the internal oscillator. So that gives us, in combination, a toggle rate of roughly 2 Hz. And this reduces the compiled binary size even more to 54 bytes. The final proper implementation of the blinking LED on the microcontroller uh, is written in assembly. It uses exactly the same 
technique as the previous microcontroller in C in that it sets up the 8-bit timer running at the same speed to toggle the LED on the compare match. Yeah, This time it's written in assembly and that brings down the compiled flash size to 14 bytes which is 7 assembly instructions and I think this is the most compact solution I can think of without using interrupts or anything. What's kind of curious is the overhead that C provides, which I didn't quite expect. If you compile a blank C program in Atmel Studio, you get 40 bytes. I'm kind of curious as to what those 40 bytes are, so maybe I'll have a look at that in another video. But I think this is the most compact way and the shortest compiled size you can have to blink this LED. Okay, and there's this final microcontroller, which kind of cheats a bit, but it uses only two instructions, two assembly instructions, which is four bytes, to blink this LED. Now this uses a kind of not something you should do or would do, but yeah, the two instructions are on the screen. We basically increment a register and then output that register to the ports. The reason this works is there is no loop so as soon as it's finished executing those two instructions, it will go through unprogrammed memory. And by default, if you've erased the chip, the unprogrammed menu will just be full of zeros. And zero, 16-bit zero, is an opcode for no op. So it will go through 510, 511 no ops after it's completed that, which act as a delay before the program counter rolls over and it returns back to the first instruction again which increments the register. Now the reason this works is we've got used the slowest clock speed which is 128 kilohertz on the internal oscillator. We divide that by 8 using one of the few settings and then port B kind of acts as a divider if we put the LED on PB5 which is the highest bit on the AT13 it divides it by a further 2 to the power of 5 by 32 to give us a oscillation rate of around 1 Hz. You've noticed that we haven't actually defined the port to be an output, but yet it can still light this LED. And the reason for this is, if you keep the data, data direction register, define it as 0 and write a 1 to the port, it acts as a pull-up resistor. So this is usually used for sensing buttons and things to keep a high level on the chip, but it does sense, does sorry, does source a small amount of current through a roughly 100 kilo ohm resistor, and that is just enough to light up the LED. So this is a bit of a cheating solution, and you could say it takes four bytes or it takes up all of the flash memory because you're using all the no ops to do it, but this is not something you would do in real life because it's probably not a good idea letting it run off into undefined memory. So I've learned a lot through this project, and I don't mean to hate on Arduino or anything, I use it all the time, the ID, to program things, and it's so easy to use, the existing libraries, the abstractions, the communities that exist around it, it just makes it so easy and quick to prototype something or to get something done. And that's really, really great when you have 32 or 16 kilobytes of flash memory to work with, but on the smaller AVRs like the ATtiny13, it's just maybe not the best when space is a limiting factor. So I think through this project I've learned that you can make some really, really efficient and really, really small code using just plain bare C. And you get to know, and you well, you have to know the low level features of the chip a lot better and you have to be referencing the data sheet all the time in order to make things work. And I think that's really fascinating. One of the more interesting things that I learned was that transitioning to assembly is not actually as hard as originally I originally thought. It's a whole different way of thinking about things, not using variables, for example, in the same way as you would use the registers in assembly, but it's just a whole different mindset, and it can create some really, really small, really, really efficient code. Going back to basics has been really, really helpful for me to try and understand the low-level nature of these microcontrollers a bit better. I hope this video has been useful for you, so good luck with your coding projects, and thank you for watching.